What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 102 and we start today's episode off with the news that Orsolini has broken his toe. Yes of course in the last game, in the last episode, that 1-1 draw at home to Fiorentina, you saw right towards the end of the game, Riccardo Orsolini went down, then hit the crossbar with the final kick of the game, but unfortunately as he limped off the pitch come the final whistle, Ricardo, our second best player of the season, with 11 assists and 6 goals in 24 Serie A games. You could stake a claim for him being our best player of the season. I would say Ivan Tony being a top scorer in a competition with 20 goals, but you could possibly make a case for Orsolini being our most influential player this season. Ricardo Orsolini is basically done for the season. A broken toe for our number 11. That means he'll be out until the start of May. So he will be back on time for the Coppa Nationale final against Inter Milan. So pleased with that. But you look at the games he's going to miss. Starting with Juventus away. Then Inter at home at the start of next month as well. The vast majority of our remaining Serie A games. And with 11 games to go. Five points behind Inter Milan. Orsolini now done for the majority of the remainder of the season. Oh man, oh man, oh man. How are we going to cope without our number 11? Well, for the first game of this episode, it's a big one. Juventus away in Turin in the Serie A on the back of that draw where today, if we lose, that will be the end of our title hopes with 10 games to go. Shorich will fill in for our number 11. And with the Fiorentina draw being so damaging, picking ourselves up here away in Turin on the back of the draw without Orsolini, what a task it's going to be for this Roma team. It's Juventus away it's a must-win one for Zaroma. Next man up, baby. Next man up. Shorich in. And, you know, he's, he's done well in limited minutes this year, but he's no Orsolini, man. I don't know. The, 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 the mood right now is just so somber. There's 11 games to go. We're only five points behind. We've got one foot in the Champions League quarterfinal. And we've got the Coppa Italia final at the end of the season. But losing Orsolini, I just I, I don't think we can come back from that. I really don't. And if we fail to win today, I'll say it right now, the title race is over as far as Roma are concerned. Mandragora. Oh, lovely. Oh. Oh, how no. I pressed circle. It was a wonderful run. <sighs> oh. That would have been one of the nicest goals of the series. I... I press circle. Too slow. Too slow. But what a start that would have been. What a start that would have been. The pressure on Ivan's shoulders right now. I mean, ri ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. No right hand man for him now to pick up the slack when he's not performing. And as for Juve, sake. Oh, Rob McNally, what a block. Oh, Paolo Lopez, what a save. What a brilliant piece of committed defending for Roma. And while some of the fans might be fearing the worst, the boys on the pitch are keeping their heads held high. What a block by Ron McNally. And our number one, Paolo Lopez, with one of the saves of the season. Brilliant. What a fantastic first half an hour this has been for football. Oh, Kloster, man, just said Calabria. Calabria. More like Calabria, nowhere near. Fantastic piece of strength there to beat our right back as we force him backwards. And this has been a brilliant first half an hour. This Someone's going to break the deadlock for half time. No doubt about it. Casemiro on the turn finds Rabiot. Werner, lovely football. Oh, it's fantastic. And Rob McNally with another sensational piece of defending. Alessio is up for it today. What a brilliant, brilliant interception last ditch. And another goal-saving challenge. Still 0-0. Tony brought down off the ball there. It's getting chippy out there. It's getting very feisty already. Oh, Calabria, good tackle. Well done. I just want to take a closer look at this off-the-ball instant here between Rafael Varane and Ivan Tony. I'm not sure whether words were exchanged, but Ivan continues to chase after Rafael long after the play continues. And look at the left arm of Rafael Varane come out on Ivan there. A little bit of an elbow to the face, perhaps? I'm sure it was unintentional, but I'll tell you what, for the rest of the game, keep your eye on that individual battle. That is going to be very intriguing indeed. Costa man shrugged off by Zaniolo and Perhaps a chance to break here, but instead, let's get the ball on the ground here. Not being very nice passing from us in the first half. Let's try and change that before the break. 
Oh, you are joking, ref. You are joking me. Oh, I'm going to be in that fourth official's ear all the way down the tunnel. Cameras panning to Ivan. Little cheeky glance at Raphael, perhaps. That is a very chippy first half. There'll be some handbags in the tunnel, I'm sure. 45 minutes to go. It's getting chippy out there. Varane launches it long. What a ball by Raphael Varane. Oh, what a start this could be for Juventus. And Timo Werner has fired the host in front. And what a goal as Juve, two minutes after the restart, strike first. Raphael Varane with a sensational ball. And Werner finishes off the move. Juventus are in front. What a ball. Short cut out. First time volley through ball. Werner in behind Ferro. 1-0 Juventus. It happened in a flash. I couldn't react. Juve in front. And I tell you what, if we lose this game, it is all over. Approaching the final 20 minutes worth of action and we are still trailing. By a goal. Magicora! No! <sighs> Chesney! What a save! Come on, come on, come on. Dia oh, surely he's in behind. Yes! Oh, Ivan Tony. Diaz in behind his man. Slid across the face. And Ivan, I know it's a cutback. I know it's sweaty. I know I didn't used to do this. But come on! Ivan could not miss. Yes! 1-1. One, one, eight minutes to go. I tell you, if we turn this around, look at the reaction on Tony. Come on! Mate, I'm not joking. I'm actually sweating right now. I'm actually sweating. Five minutes to go. And I still think there's a winner in this. But it could go either way. Oh, Fossi meant a big tackle. Oh, Diaz just couldn't get it. Oh, it's getting very, very feisty out there now. It's getting very lively. Five minutes to go. The loser could be out of the title race with ten games to go. Oh, this is going to be so tense. Oh, good cross. Ron McNally away. Shot blocked. Oh, Paul Lopez. What a stop. And there it is. It's all over in Turin. And a very chippy and feisty affair has ended all square. 1-1. One, one. We salvage a point courtesy of Ivan Tony's late goal. But that was feisty and fiery. Ten games to go. Look at him walking off the pitch. Oh, my word. What a fantastic game. So much drama. My, oh, my. I'm surprised that those two didn't come to blows there. That was very, very tense. In one of the most aggressive, tense, chippy affairs of FIFA career mode I've ever played, it's only fitting the game did end all square. Had it not done so, I'm pretty sure there would have been some fights in the tunnel, but a 1-1 draw doesn't really do either team a favour in the grand scheme of things. With 10 games to go, both of us drop points in the race to catch into Milan, and the gap at the top of the table between the top two is now three points, and the gap between us and Inter Milan is now seven points. With 10 games to go, there's still time for us to make up the deficit, but it's looking increasingly unlikely now. We will not be winning the Serie A, which is what the board have asked of us in our first season. And after spending almost £400 million on building this Roma team, to be seven points behind the league leaders with 10 games to go, that is pretty goddamn embarrassing. So for the second game of today's episode, on the back of that very aggressive fight, 
against Juventus where I can only apologise for how chippy it got. But it really was tense, I've got to be honest, man. I was playing that game last night. I was sweating. I was sweating playing the game. It really was that aggressive. Heading into the second game of this episode, it's uh, away to England for the second game here. As we take on Manchester City in the Champions League round of 16 second leg. And this was going to be a really weird game because heading into the match, we were leading by four goals to nil. And thus, even with it being a massive game, I decided to rest seven of my regular starters, feeling confident that even without two games without a win, we'd still get what we need to do tonight. And that was avoid conceding four or more goals. And at the break, as we were tied at 1-1, Pep Guardiola was fuming heading to the dressing room after Pina Monti scored our all-important away goal that surely secured our progress. He seemed to trip up the defender inside the area in order to get the free volley. He was appealing for the VAR. He was not happy. Thankfully, the goal still stood. But as you'll see, we did lose the game by two goals to one. Lorenzo Insigne, the formerly Napoli forward, gave Man City the win. But whilst we do lose the battle, we do win the war. We are into the quarterfinals of the Champions League. It was just a, a really weird game. You know, it was just such a flat atmosphere out there. You know, it's the round of 16 in the Champions League, but the atmosphere at the Etihad was just so flat, just so soft. It didn't really feel like a, a Champions League knockout tie due to the fact that the tie was kind of already over after the first leg away in in Rome. But either way, we make it through despite losing the game. It's only our second loss in all competitions since joining Roma. We still make it through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League where after the game, you see the full results of who did what in the other knockout ties in the last 16. The draw has now been made and in the quarterfinals of the Champions League, Roma will be taking on... I mean, I, I just, I, I, just, I just don't know what to say. How do we avoid these guys? Frank Lampard's Chelsea. How do we avoid these guys, man? Into the last state, some cracking ties in the quarterfinals, of course. And you see the tie as well. It's sandwiched in between Inter Milan as well. It's sandwiched in between Inter Milan at the Stadio Olimpico. That quarterfinal tie, I cannot believe it. Chelsea again. We took them on in the group stage. We finished runners up to them in the group stage. We had draws in both the home game and the game at Stamford Bridge as well. And now Champions League quarterfinal, Frank Lampard's Chelsea. We can't avoid these guys, man. We're playing in Italy this season and we're going to face them four times in the year. Absolutely absurd. Twice in Europe, both in the group stage and in the knockout stage as well. I mean, we, yeah, we, we could be managing a Brazilian team. We could be playing in a Copa Libertadores. And I wouldn't be surprised if they got pulled out of the hat in the semi-finals. I mean, you can't avoid these guys. Chelsea are everywhere in this career mode. We'll be taking them on in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. The first leg coming in the very next episode, with the first leg being at the Stadio Olimpico. I just can't believe it, man. How on earth do we shake Chelsea off our tails? Anyway, third and final game of today's episode on the back of the draw is going to be back at the Stadio Olimpico and back in the Serie A as we will take on Hellas Verona here, looking to get back to winning ways after no wins in our last three and our first defeat since match day two in the Serie A. Taking on Hellas Verona, got the opening goal of the game through Zaniola, but how on earth we weren't three or four goals up at the break, I do not know. Had some golden chances, including that one missed by Moise Akeem, but in the end, once again, as you can see, like it has been all all season long. It wasn't our high-powered offense that got us to win. It was our rock-solid defense. Yet another clean sheet for the boys in the back line. A 1-0 victory with Juventus and Inter Milan winning. It still feels like a bit of a somber mood. Nine games to go, seven points to deficit. It is still possible, but with Inter Milan coming in the next episode, fail to win that game with the Stadio Olimpico, and that will be that. The title race will surely be all over. But that was today's episode of Career Mode, guys. So big thank you for watching. We really hope you have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you. Have a fantastic New Year's Day. And do not miss the next episode. First leg against Chelsea in the Champions League quarter final. And that big title clash against Inter Milan as well. And I'll see you for it very soon.